Hey, what's going on, family? It is Thick Chick Vlogs. It is late at night. It is around almost midnight. Um, I just got home and just got out of the shower and all of that good jazz. And um, I was looking on my Facebook page because I wasn't home at the time. And I see everybody posting that there was breaking news in New York City where, um, you know, the grand jury decided not to indict the officer who put um, Eric Garner in the chokehold in Staten Island, New York. Um, if you guys don't remember, this whole situation happened, you know, um, a couple of months back. And all of it was caught on video. Now, what I want to say about this whole situation is, you know, a lot of people can say what they want to say about the Mike Brown situation. Um, you know, people can have their differences of opinions. They can feel like it was justified. Whatever they want to feel regarding the Mike Brown situation, even though I personally feel like that officer should have been, been indicted, they should have went to trial, and they should have tried it um, in front of a, a jury of, you know, um, the peers where people can actually see what is going on behind closed doors. I really think that they should have indicted him and, you know, went from there. Um, but none of that stuff was caught on video. So it's kind of like the police officer's word against, you know, Michael Brown, the witnesses and his friend that was with him during his time of death. And this is a pillow, by the way. I don't know about it. They think I'm sitting here with this is a pillow. And, um, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, those people's word against the police officer's word, even though, you know, Pretty much everyone's, you know, is a, a everyone's account is that Mike Brown's hands were up in the air. But you know, there are a lot of evidence that came back that Mike Brown was inside of the car. He was tussling with the officer, or whatever. Okay, like I said, I didn't feel like that was justified, but the decision has been made. Um, in the Eric Garner case, what I can honestly say is that all of this stuff was caught on video. Number one. So, you know, you have video evidence that there was excessive force used by um, these police officers to take this man down. Now, they can sit there and try to argue all they want that he was selling cigarettes on the corner, um, all of this type of stuff. But from my understanding, when they walked up on him, he was not selling cigarettes at that particular point in time. Now, from my understanding, he does have a history of selling cigarettes. But at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck if this man robbed the bank the day before that. Okay? He was not resisting arrest. Yes, he asked them, you know, what are you walking up on me for? Which I can understand anybody would be agitated if you got a police officer who's walking up on you, you know, you haven't done anything wrong, and they're basically harassing you. That can and will piss you off. And I'm going to um, address something else later on in this video um, regarding that whole situation. So naturally, you know, um, you're going to ask them, well, what did I do? You know, okay, you're selling cigarettes illegally. Now, um, I also, from my understanding, when um, a person is caught selling cigarettes or whatever in New York, you're supposed to be giving a citation, basically a ticket for selling um, cigarettes. Now, from um, the, it was also said that Michael, not Michael Brown, I'm sorry, that Eric Garner had just got done breaking up a fight. And I guess, you know, he was kind of agitated, but he was not resisting arrest. And regardless. There were however many police officers, seven, eight police officers, when that man continuously said 11 times that he could not breathe, that he could not breathe. You were continuously having him, choking him, and, and that, that's another thing that's completely illegal um, to do against company policy for, um, you know, police department or whatever. Hell, that should be against the uh, law for anybody for you to choke someone like that. Being a police officer, I'm pretty sure in your training that you were trained in different ways to subdue or, um, you know, uh, restrain uh, 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 people who you you feel are resisting arrest other than choking them. OK, and uh, of course, you're choking this guy and he's telling you that he can't breathe and you're continuously choking him. Not only that, you have your hand on his head and you're pressing his head against the pavement. How in the, and all of this is caught on camera. So how the fuck is that justified? 
don't understand it, not one bit. And it's also being said that some of the lawyers and things for, you know, this police officer, they're saying that Eric Garner was overweight. He had hypertension. He had all of these things wrong with him, which could have contributed to him dying rather than um, this guy putting him in the chokehold. You dumb motherfuckers, okay? I don't give a damn if I got high attention. I don't give a fuck if I'm a thousand pounds. Naturally, you putting me in the chokehold is going to agitate any of that shit. Uh, if I got high blood pressure, you putting me in the chokehold, that's going to raise my motherfucking blood pressure. Shit is just stupid. It's all out motherfucking doors. But let me tell you a little bit something about the police, okay? When I tell you, I respect the police because they are the police. But it is sad. I have never been to jail. I've never even had a traffic ticket, you guys. You can you can believe it or you cannot believe it. I've never even had a traffic ticket. I am terrified of the police. I've never smoked a day in my life. I don't drink. I, I, I'm just a, you know, a upstanding citizen. I don't do anything wrong. And it's pathetic and it's sad that I'm actually afraid of the police. People who are supposed to um who who I'm supposed to feel comforted by people who I'm supposed to feel protected by especially when you got police officers um who have things like this I don't know if you guys have heard about some of these stories this lady he she called the police to because her son was kind of agitated he was I don't know if he was um like had some kind of mental disorder but she called the police because he was getting rowdy um so she wanted the police to come and try to help her you know get him to take his medicine because I guess he was kind of fighting her not fighting her physically but you know how sometimes if you have a mentally disabled child they might be combating you you know because they don't want to do what you, you know that they need to do but they're you know kind of combative so you know you call to get a little bit of help to come and help you rectify the situation um the police officers came there and they killed the boy Yes, they shot and they killed him um because the mom called and she was trying to uh get them to help her help her son take his medicine. They came, they shot and they killed him. Um I'm pretty sure you guys have also heard about the um 12-year-old boy, I cannot think of his name, forgive me Lord. I cannot think of his name who the police officers killed because he had um he was pointing um a BB gun that looked like a realistic gun. Um, he was pointing it at people and a lot of people were arguing, arguing the fact that, uh, you know, the, the boy should have known better than to be pointing a gun at people. And a lot of people were saying like, okay, who do we blame in this situation? Do we blame the police, the corrupt ass police officers for shooting who, um, obviously was a child or do we blame the parents for, you know, not teaching their son to not point guns at each other? I mean, uh, at people, or do we blame the manufacturer of um, these uh, uh, toy guns who make these realistic looking toy guns um, for kids to play with? You know, who, who do we blame in this situation? And, you know, there are a lot of people who are really upset about that situation because they feel like it was unjustified that the police officers killed, you know, this 12 year old child. Um, when, when they could have used, uh, other means of, um, uh, 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 trying to restrain him. They could have, you know, asked him to put the gun down. From my understanding, I couldn't watch the video. There is a video that's showing the police officer shooting and killing this 12 year old boy. I can't stomach to watch it. I know some people, you know, have no issues with watching things like that. I can't watch shit like that because it really touches, it pulls at my heartstrings, especially when you have a child, even a human being. I don't give a damn if it's a child, grown, for, uh, grown person, man, woman. I don't give a damn. I, this type of stuff just pulls at my heartstring and I can't watch the type of stuff. So I don't know if it has audio or whether it doesn't have audio. But I'm wondering if they ask the child, you know, put the gun down and all this good stuff. I mean, instead of just opening fire on him, like I said, I didn't watch it. So I, I don't really know it. There may be audio to the video and they maybe they did tell him to put the gun down and he was pointing at them. I don't know because I didn't watch it. But I can say that um, that that is a tragic situation. And sometimes I feel like a lot of the things that police officers do is unjustified. And I think sometimes they're on power trips. Um you get a lot of police officers that do so much corrupt shit. And I understand a lot of people do corrupt shit. But these are people who are supposed to be protecting us. And you got police officers that are out there 
um, taking money from drug dealers um, so that they can, you know, they know known drug dealers who sell drugs, who are on the corner selling drugs or whatever. You got police officers who take money from the drug dealers in order to not bust them for being on the corner. They continuously let them be on the corner selling dope. And they just take the money from the, you know, the dope dealers. You even got some police officers who will bust um, drug dealers take all of their fucking money and tell them if they say anything, they're going to charge them with it. I mean, you got some crooked ass fucking police officers out here. I have a friend who was coming over my house one day and um, he had came over here and it was like, I don't remember. It was so, well, not here, but it's, this was so long ago. This was probably about, I don't know, maybe two, three years ago. He was headed over to my house and um, he was like, I was like, damn, it sure is taking you a long time because I was texting his phone and he wouldn't answer the text. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And he was like, um, the police pulled me over. And I was like, what the hell? You were speeding? He was like, I wasn't speeding or anything. It was late at night and he was driving. And what it was, he was in a, you know, Crown Victoria with some rims on it. And the police, I guess they the, they just assumed that he was a dope dealer. He wasn't riding with his music loud or anything like that. He said he was just randomly driving and they pulled him over. And he said two police officers came up to his car. One came to the driver's side window. One came to the passenger side window. He was in there by himself. And they were asking him for his driver's license and all this type of stuff. And he asked them, what did he do wrong? And they told him, just shut the fuck up. Yes, he, they told him to shut the fuck up and do what they asked, okay? He said, so of course he gave it to him because it's the middle of the night. He a black man and it's two white cops that are coming up to his car. So he said he gave it to him and they told him to get out of the car. Now, at this particular point in time, he said he was he, he was actually afraid to get out of the car. He said, number one, it was unjustified the reason why they pulled him over first and foremost. It was at night. There were no other cars on the road. So he was scared to get out because he didn't know what the fuck they were going to do to him. So he said he proceeds to ask them for their badge number. And said the guy was like, you know what, I want to search your car. And he was like, you want to search my car for what? He said, I'm not speeding. I'm not drunk. Um, I have a driver's license. I have insurance. What is your reason for wanting to search my car? And they told him to basically shut the fuck up and do what they asked. So he said what he did was he got out of the car, but he refused for, to let them search his car. And, you know, I guess they didn't want to go through the whole process of trying to get a, I guess they had to get a search and seize warrant or whatever. I don't really know. But he had his camera rolling the entire time. And he actually went to wherever you go to file a complaint on the police officers. And there has actually been several complaints filed on these police officers um, for uh, targeting black people. And uh, I don't know what happened to him. I don't know if they ended up getting terminated, fired, or reprimanded, or whatever. I don't really know. But um, those police officers, those two particular police officers, have had several write-ups against them um, for um, basically profiling black people unjustly. Okay? Just randomly driving down the street. You pull me over. I want to see your license, drive your your license uh, insurance, and I want to search your shit, okay? Because you look like you a, a motherfucking criminal, which is you know, family. It, it it's a sad, like I said, it is pathetic and it's pitiful when you have video evidence of police officers being, um, I'm not gonna say corrupt, but when you have police officers that are using excessive force, when you have police officers that are unjustly um, harming people and there's nothing being done about it so just imagine if some shit were to happen to you or I whether you black white purple or green and there's no video evidence um, just a, they damn sure ain't gonna indict them then but if you actually have video evidence they still not not indicting them so my thing is this when you have police officers that are out there doing this type of thing do you think they're thinking twice about the shit that they're doing because all of their all they're going to think in the back of their mind is okay my buddies they're going to vouch for me they're going to sit there and they're going to say yeah this 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 and this happened yeah it was justified so I'm you know I'm not going to get reprimanded for it they know that the the system is basically on their side they already know that they already know that the system is on their side. And I don't care who you are, whether you're black, white, purple, green, or orange. You cannot sit here and honestly tell me that you think what those police officers did to Eric Garner 
was justified. You cannot honestly sit there and tell me that that was justified. You can't. You can't tell me that not with a straight face. You can't. And for the grand jury to sit there and, and, and watch that video, I'm pretty sure watch it and hear Eric Garner tell those police officers over and over again, I cannot breathe. And they continuously choke him, pressing his head against the, the concrete uh, uh, ground because they were suspecting him of selling some fucking cigarettes. Really? Now, you got other people out there that are saying, well, if you don't resist arrest, then you shouldn't, you know, if you don't, if you don't resist arrest, you wouldn't have that to worry about. Let me ask you this question. If that was your son or if that was your brother, how would you feel? If the police came up to them unjustly because they thought they were doing something or even if they were doing it, selling cigarettes. Do you think it's okay for the police officer to come up to your father, your brother, your son, your uncle, your cousin and just choke them out when they clearly are, you know, have their hands up like this? Like, okay, uh, why are you fucking with me? I ain't pulling that out of my pocket. I ain't doing nothing. And you choking my ass out. I can't fucking breathe. And you still choking me. I'm laying on the ground unresponsive. And you just sitting there looking stupid. I'm pretty sure one of y'all motherfuckers know some CPR. Okay. The man is sitting there gasping for fucking air. What's the issue? So it's a sad day in America. It's a sad day in New York City. It's a sad day everywhere. Okay. There's a whole lot of shit that's going on. People are already, the tensions are high still because of the um the situation in Ferguson regarding the no indictment for Officer Darren Wilson and, you know, all of this stuff. Now you have the grand jury who found this police officer to um have done nothing wrong in killing murdering Eric Garner and if you it's, it is murder because the uh the 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 autopsy report um ruled it as a homicide yes they did they ruled it as a homicide so why they even had to um I, I know there's a process but the fact that the autopsy ruled this a homicide and you're still not indicting this man don't get it don't get it like i said the situation in ferguson and this one are a little bit different because yes we can all argue about the Mike Brown situation all day and all night. I feel like, you know, he that was excessive shooting him, an unarmed, unarmed man that many times. I don't care if he was black or purple. Shooting an unarmed man that many times was excessive. And he should have been indicted. And definitely in this situation, when you are putting a person in the chokehold, something that is clearly against the um, the policy and the procedures of the police force, you're putting this man in the chokehold and he, he's continuously telling you that he can't breathe and it's all caught on video. Yes, you should be indicted and you should be charged with murder. There is no if, ands, buts or nothing else about that. So like I said, just pray for Eric Garner's family, pray for Mike Michael Brown's family, just pray for America and the fact that we have uh, people out here that are decent people in this world who are afraid of people who are supposed to be protecting us. It's a sad day in America, family. It's a sad day in America. It's a sad day in America.